about essential qualities of people who serve God. Now, we want to raise the people to serve God, but it's very important that we let them realize that uh, when people want to serve God, it's something honorable, but we must have the right motive. We must have the right motive, and uh, we want to build up a relationship, close relationship with God and also take care of different problems in life uh, before we serve God. Because if people live in sin, then, uh, then they have to take care of the problems first before they can serve God. If not, it's reversing the order. So it's first building up the relationship with God and then uh, take care of different problems in life and then serve God. Okay? The first part of essential qualities of people who serve God is relationship with God. I want to say this is everyone needs to build up a relationship with God. Even pastors. Sometimes even pastors uh, might not have a very close relationship with God or, or they are uh, relying totally on God. Sometimes pastors can be relying on their abilities or relying on the people to work together instead of saying God is your ministry, it's your work. So we want to trust in you and totally let you be the Lord. So it's very important to have a close relationship with the Lord. And, and uh, John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So Jesus said here, he is the vine, the true vine. This is figurative speech. Uh, this, Jesus is not a tree. But Jesus is using this figurative speech that he's like the vine and we are like the branches. And then when we live in Him, when we abide in Him, when we live in Him, and then He will abide in us, and then we'll bear much fruit. We'll have peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, and also we'll have the desire to bless people. And then we'll have the fruit of ministry, helping people. For without you, you can do nothing. Without me, without Jesus, we can do nothing. So we must believe that. We ourselves cannot do anything. We cannot change people's life. We cannot build up a church. It's God who does it. So it's, the first thing is that we need to have this close relationship with God and trust in God. It's God who works. Uh, so we trust in God that He is the one who works. Then we can have fruit. So in our heart we say, Lord, I trust in You only. You are the one who bring fruit. Okay? And delight in the Lord, and we can go higher. Isaiah 58, 14. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So when we delight ourselves in the Lord, that means we are happy with the Lord. We're happy with everything about God, about His quality and what He has done for us. We're happy that he is a loving God. He is a holy God. And we are happy that He has blessed us. He has given us eternal life. His Holy Spirit has worked in our lives. And, and He has done wonderful things in the whole world. So we delight ourselves in God and in, in His work. And then if we delight in God, He will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth. He will cause us to go to a high place. That He will raise us up to a high place. That because people who delight in the Lord, who are thankful to the Lord, God is happy with them and God will raise up their life to a high level that they can bless many people. So delight in God Himself, in His goodness and His sufficient grace. That we delight in God Himself and in the goodness of God and His sufficient grace. So that is a key point, a key thing that we do in order to have a close relationship with the Lord and that God is pleased with us and bless our life. So we always say, I want to be, uh, I want to delight in the Lord. I want to be thankful for everything about God. I'm thankful for God him, yourself and I'm thankful for what you have done in my life. And then have strength from God's love and joy. Psalm 90 verse 14, Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. So, all, all of us need to satisfy ourselves with 
God's mercy, that we ask God to satisfy us with God's mercy. Now, I have heard that even pastors, I've heard that even pastors might not delight in the Lord, that they might not delight in the Lord and then they... Um, so we all, all of us need to be satisfied with God's mercy so that we can rejoice all the days of our life. And uh, there are people who serve God with heavy burden, that they, they're burdened. Uh, they're not peaceful. They're not joyful. They are, they are always saying, oh, I haven't done enough. They're not enough fruit. Uh, the, the church is too small. We, then we are carrying the burden. God doesn't want us to carry the burden when we serve God. When we serve God, God wants us to trust in Him. It's His ministry. It's His church. So we are not responsible for how many people are in the church, but we want to help the church to grow. But we trust in God mainly. We say, God, you are responsible. You do great things. And I have a close relationship with you. And then I'll have joy all the days of my life. And I will have strength. And then the presence of God will bring people to Christ. So it's not just work, but there are people who serve God with just hard work. They just want to attract people and they sometimes push people to believe in Jesus and force people and give pressure to serve God. Now, this is not how God works. God wants to move people by His love. God wants to change people by His love. When, when God you know, God's presence comes, people's life will be changed. They will be attracted by God's love. And they will be attracted by God's joy. And then they are changed by God's presence. So we want to rejoice in the Lord and let God do His work. Instead of for us to do the work. You know, we do work, but then the result comes from the Lord. When people put pressure on themselves. Now this is very important quality of someone who serves God. When people put pressure on themselves, I have to have a big church, I have to have growth, I have to show people that I have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that many people will fall when I pray for them. When people have this kind of pressure, they want to show off, they want to show to people that they are a powerful minister. They think that this way, then people will believe in Jesus and follow them. That's not how we do. We, we want to draw people's attention to Jesus. Jesus is so wonderful. We want to draw people to be attracted by God, to be loved by God. And first of all, we enjoy God. When we enjoy God, people know, know it. People will see our life is full of the work of God. People will, will, um, will be attracted by the presence of God. And then be good and faithful servant. There are two elements here, good and faithful. Matthew 25, 21. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. So God wants to see us as good and faithful servant. Good means that we have good life quality. We, are, we have love, joy, peace, kindness, mercy, compassion on people. And respect for God. Honoring God. And then faithful means we faithful doing what we do. Now we, when we are good and faithful servants, God will be responsible for the results. Of course, we will examine our ministry. How can we grow? But we don't want to do it under pressure. We don't want to do it saying, I have to make the church grow. But we can say, the Lord is working here. The Lord is working here. I can trust in Him. So that's very important element and so I hope that every pastor who hears this message will say yes Lord I need the relationship with God I want to be uh, I can enjoy God's presence I can enjoy him and be strengthened by him and then when I have followed God's Jesus example to have a loving life a life to love God and love people a holy life and I I'm faithful in what I do God will bless my ministry and do great things in my life and then love God first before feeding God's lambs. It's very important that we love God first. It's not just loving the ministry. It's love God first and then love people and then love uh, the ministry. So first the priority is love God first and then our family and then love people and then love, uh, the, uh, and then love the ministry. 
John tw uh, 21 15 so when they had eaten breakfast Jesus said to Simon Peter Simon son of Jonah do you love me more than this he said to him yes Lord you know that I love you he said to him feed my lambs so Jesus want to make sure that we all love him before we sh feed his lamb because when we love him then he can work in our life then his light will show through our life his love and joy and peace will show through our life and then we feed his lamb then we can feed them with the word of God and with the life of God that they, they can see the life of God in us and sincerely obeying God not just doing ministry I have known pastors who have stolen money from the church or pastor who have committed adultery so and this is not these are not pleasing to God and this would ruin their ministry and ruin their life so we it's very important that we uh, obey God Matthew 7 22 many will say to me in that day Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name and then I would declare to them I never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness because Jesus said uh, not o not everyone who says Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven so only those who obey God can uh, enter the kingdom of heaven and then there are many people who have prophesied in Jesus name and cast out demons and do many wonders but their life is not a life of close relationship uh, with God and obedience to God and loving God and then Jesus said I never knew you that means they don't have a relationship with God so we want to examine our lives do we have a relationship with God now we can tell the work of the Holy Spirit in us to know that we have connection with God and we can examine <coughs> ourselves <coughs> and we can help our church members to examine themselves first the Holy Spirit will help us to be repentant of our sins so all real Christians <coughs> all real Christians will repent of their sins and uh, and you know they, they become sensitive to their sins they know the sins they uh, they know the sins and this is the sign of the Holy Spirit working in their life that God is working in their life God is alive and this shows that when people have a repentant heart this shows that they are really born again and the next thing is they will trust in Jesus they they want Jesus to save them they want Jesus to give them eternal life and then they will also have the fruit of the Holy Spirit they want to love people they want to care about people they have the joy of the Lord they have the strength from the Lord so this three are the signs that a person is born again first he would be sensitive to his sins that he is aware of his sins and he's repentant of his sins and and trust in Jesus to forgive his sins and second he uh, he want to trust in Jesus as his Savior he hold on to Jesus he doesn't want to give up Jesus and then thirdly he would have the fruit of the Holy Spirit he would have love joys patience kindness and he would have the heart to care about people have the heart uh, of compassion all these shows that the person is born again so every minister must be born again and every uh, Christians must be born again there are people who believe in Jesus and they think they really believe in Jesus and they're not born again now why because they just believe in the mind just in the head they say okay Jesus is God Jesus is Lord but they don't really repent personally they don't really hold on to Jesus and say you are my Savior you are my Lord and you can give me salvation and you are so important that there are people who um, who don't have this repentant heart and the trust in Jesus as the Savior then they are not born again they're just having the knowledge of Jesus now one time I, I dealt with a pastor that who has handled the money dishonestly and I said 
when you're not willing to let me know how you use the money, you, you have to face God. It will affect your ministry, you have, it will affect your relationship with God, and you can lose salvation. And he refused to respond to me. And, uh, you know, I have told him, this is most important. This is more important than for you to get more money from me. And, uh, and the person did not respond. And I, I'm sorry for him. I hope that he will repent and really trust in Jesus as his Savior and have this heart of repentance. If a person sins, if he steals money, if he has lust or adultery, fornication, or hurting people, or uh, lazy, uh, hurting, uh, you know, doing things that dishonor God, if they do these things and don't feel sorry for the sins, they might not have the Holy Spirit inside them. After a while, they might say, I'm, I have been serving God for so long. I have read the Bible. I know the Bible. I know what I should do but they don't do it. And they don't have a heart of repentance. They don't have the trust in God and they don't obey God. Then they might not have salvation. So I hope that we all understand that. It's very important that first we have this relationship with God. And, and uh, now here, look at the two points. We are saved by grace through faith, but faith always bear fruit. We're not saved by doing good. We're saved by grace through faith when we trust in Jesus. But faith will always bear fruit. It will always have good works that follow. No good works can mean dead faith and no salvation. If a person says he's born, he, he believes in Jesus, but he doesn't change. He still keep yelling at people, keep telling lies and committing adultery or, or having lust or steal money and doesn't repent and, or hurt people without repentance. He might not have saving faith, and if he doesn't have saving faith, he will not be saved. He will not be born again. So it's very important to discern that a person not that when that his faith is real, sincere faith, that he has real repentance of their sins and trust in Jesus and sincere trust in Jesus as a savior and the reliance on Jesus and obeying Jesus to bear the fruit of salvation, then he is born again. Now we are not saved by doing good, but when we are saved, the Holy Spirit will teach us to follow God and obey God, because God is a holy God. If a, a Christian doesn't obey God, then his faith is dead. Okay, and then the personal qualities of someone who serves God. Uh, I have to fill in the blanks here. So peacefulness and quietness, so this is a quality the personal quality uh, of person who serves God is that he has peace in the Lord. He doesn't carry his burdens. He doesn't, uh, he's not bothered by people or things. We le learn not to be bothered by sinful people or what they do. It's their faults. I don't have to carry their burdens. So they are peaceful in the Lord also, that they are peaceful, that they trust in God and know that God will provide for them. God will bless them so they don't, worry about things and quietness of the spirit that they are not noisy they are not frustrated they're not angry but they are peaceful and the second quality is love that we have love for people for god that we want to honor god we thank god we we treasure god and we treasure people we see that every person is precious and humility, John 3, 30. He must decrease, but I must decrease. Uh, I'm sorry. He must increase, but I must decrease. Now here is John the Baptist said that Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. So we are to glorify God. When I decrease, God can, when I decrease, God can do more. When I lower myself, I humble myself, God can do more things. When I increase, I can block God's work. Some people want to make themselves a great uh, famous pastor. Now, it's okay to be a great pastor that we can bless many people, but we d our goal is not to become famous or rich. God will take care of our needs. God will bless us. So we don't look for ways to raise ourselves up. Now, we want to help 
the church to grow, but we don't just have the goal of having a big church. We want a church that glorifies God. The, everyone glorifies God. So we, we want to serve God with humility. It's God who works. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's you who work, not me. And then pursue holiness. 2 Timothy 2.20 but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and hay and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So in a great house there are vessels of gold and silver uh, and also vessels of wood and clay and some for honor and some for dishonor. And then we in the house of God can be an honorable vessel of God and also some people can be a dishonorable vessel. And if we cleanse ourselves <coughs> from our sins, from the dishonor, <coughs> he will be a vessel for honor. That he will be an honorable vessel. He will show the glory of God. He will show the holiness and the love of God. And He is sanctified and useful for the Master, prepared for every good work. So it's very important that we live in holiness before we serve God. And if we have sins, we say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I truly hate my sins and I want to turn away from my sins. <clears throat> I want to obey God and love God. Okay? <clears throat> And then cast the burdens to Jesus and serve joyfully. Learn to be gentle and humble like Jesus. <clears throat> so Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus said here, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, all who are, uh, have burdens, and I'll give you rest. Now this includes pastors who serve God, anyone who serves God, anyone who does any kind of work. Jesus wants to give us rest. Jesus wants us to rest in Him and trust in Him. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So take Jesus' yoke means to serve God, that the yoke is put on the neck and the shoulder of a an ox to pull the plow so we have Jesus yoke upon us and then we serve Jesus and learn from him so learn his life learn his humility learn his love learn his joy and peace and no burden for I am gentle and lowly in heart God is very Jesus very gentle and lowly and very humble and you'll find rest for your soul so if we serve God and learn from Jesus will find rest for our souls then we have deeper rest so here this passage is talked about rest two times come to me then you'll find rest and the next step the first step is when we trust in Jesus as our Savior so when we read Bible passages we want to read carefully so the first time here talks about rest and we want to have the habit of marking the Bible marking verses uh, keywords and then we notice here there are two times it says rest. The first time is when we come to Jesus and trust in Jesus to take away our burdens. And then the second level is uh, that we take Jesus' yoke and serve Jesus and learn from Jesus. And then we'll find rest for our souls. Then we'll find a deeper rest. So when we serve God, we should find a deeper rest. But there are many, many People who serve God, who serve God with burden because they just look for results. They say, I want the church to grow. I want all the people to love God and serve God and I want more offering. Now, then they are just looking at the result. But we will say, if we say, I'm living the life of God. I'm glorifying God. Everything I do, I glorify God. And I, I let people see the wonderful uh, nature of God, the wonderful work of God. Then God is responsible then I can relax I can rest so when we serve God we can serve in a peaceful and burdenless condition instead of serving in with burdens for my yoke is easy and my burden is light some people say no it's not easy 
if we carry the burden then it's heavy but if we say God you're responsible then it's not heavy and even for provision we say Lord you can provide for me Lord we trust in you you can provide for us we just trust in you we just come to you and pray to you and all the people pray together for God's provision and God's provision will come when we trust in him totally and love him and teach the people to love God to honor God to respect God then God will bless the people and bless the church Jesus yoke is easy because when we stay close to him he will help us all the way he will help us in all our ministry our life okay ability to feel and understand people so this is another important quality for people who serve God that we can feel and understand understand the needs and the burdens Romans 12 15 rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep so when we see people are rejoicing we're happy with them even though what they're happy about is not related to us when they're happy uh, that they you know that they have found a work they have uh, have a baby or when they uh, have brought someone to Jesus they have helped someone they pray for someone and they experience the Holy Spirit then we're happy with them we rejoice with them as if it is me who experienced that thank you thank you and thank God that you're working in this person's life and weep with those who weep when they are suffering we suffer with them we weep with them and that will let people know that we care about their feelings now it doesn't mean we are burdened when they are weeping we we can weep with them or we just feel sad with them but we don't feel the we don't carry the burden we don't say oh I cannot sleep I cannot sleep because he has problem which and trust everything to God we lead the person to trust in God and pray to God for God's guidance and blessings so this is an important quality there are many pastors who preach and then the message is not related to the needs of the people they're not related to the feelings and the condition of the people because they don't care about the people that much if we care about the people more we understand the feelings then when we uh, share our messages we will talk about their needs their burdens their problems and then people feel loved the understanding of feelings comes from love that we love them we care about them so we uh, share the feeling okay? and then also as a serve, someone who serves God we need to learn to be a good listener James 1 19 so that my beloved brethren let everyone be swift to hear slow to speak slow to breath so we want to be able to swift to be swift to hear we want to hear uh, quickly when we pay attention to people now I notice that women can usually listen better I notice that my wife can listen to people's needs more and I learn from her and I learn from other people and to pay attention to people's needs and what they say pay attention to the keywords what they say and also pay attention to the body language to the facial expression when they talk if the facial expression shows that they are burdened they are unhappy then we say I see that you're unhappy I know that it's difficult for you now so we share that we not let them know that we know their pressure so we we are swift to hear the words and also hear uh, from the facial expression and from the body language uh, and from the tone of voice to know how they are so we uh, swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath so we don't speak fast and we don't get angry fast and we try not to be angry we try to handle the anger uh, when we face any problem we want to face we want to face it with uh, with a peaceful heart trusting that God will take care of it so listen to people even when they have diff different opinions so even when people have different opinions we still listen to them even we disagree with them we still listen to them and to find out why people have different opinions and handle with fairness so why do they have different opinions opinions we want to know why and then handle with fairness okay uh, it depends on why uh, how they are different uh, now some biblical teachings uh, it doesn't allow us to be different for instance we should love God 
That is a biblical teaching. We should live a holy life. Now, but when this person doesn't have this motivation to love God or live a holy life, we cannot just push the person. He will not change. But we can tell them about the goodness of God. Now, I talk about that in uh, how to motivate people to love God and serve God. We motivate people to love God and serve God by telling them how wonderful God is and how God cares about us. And God loves us. We are precious. And then if we obey Him, He's very happy and He will for sure bless us. So that motivates us to love Him and obey Him because God is a holy God. He's a loving God. He's also a holy God. And then when we sin, God doesn't like sin. When we stay in sin, it will destroy our relationship with God. God cannot come close to us because of our sins. God cannot do great things in our life because of sin. So we lead people to understand the destructiveness of sin. Sin is very destructive. So uh, don't follow sin, but trust in Jesus as our Savior and relax in Him and love Him and turn away from all sins and hate sin. So we guide people to change. But when we listen to them that they cannot love God, we listen to them and we accept that at this point they still cannot love God. But we will uh, let them know about the goodness of God and then how God loves them and we care about them and we want to bless them and pray for them to help them to grow in Jesus. Three. Listen to the needs and hurts of people and express empathy. So when they have needs and hurts, we, we respond with empathy. We say, yes, I know it's difficult for you. I know it makes you unhappy. So we want to express this empathy to people. So even when people disagree with us, we'll listen and we try to guide the person. And if the person doesn't change at this point, we still accept them. We still love them and we want to bless them and help them. Okay, and then qualities as a shepherd. First, go to serve and not to be served. Matthew twenty twenty eight. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So here the picture, the person is helping another person. We come to serve and not to be served. Now some leaders, they always want people to honor him, respect him, obey him in every way. Now, people should respect, honor, and obey the pastors, but they don't obey the pastors uh, as much as we obey God because pastors can still have faults. When a pastor has done something wrong and the people uh, give suggestion to the pastor, the pastor should listen and should not say, I'm the pastor, you listen to me. You, I'm never wrong. You're wrong. You have to change. So a pastor cannot force obedience to him like that. He has to use the Word of God to guide the people. And he doesn't force the people. He leads the people to love God. Even when the people are not strong enough, when they are not obedient to the Lord, they still guide them with patience and, and kindness. So we don't come to be served. Some pastors, you know, make all the people do all the things for him and he just come like a king. Now as a pastor we want to serve people, we want to be blessing people and helping people and have a heart to help people. And, and uh, now if people bless us and serve us, it's, uh, it's their privilege and it's what they should do. But we should not demand that. If they do it, we appreciate them too, we thank them, we appreciate them for helping us. Willing to serve any unimportant person. Now, many people complain that uh, the leaders and the pastors serve the, uh, the rich people more. And the poor people, they don't serve. They don't care about them. Or people who have emotional problems, have a lot of problems, then the leaders don't serve that much. So we want to serve everyone. Matthew 25, 40, And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did it, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. So when, it, when we do it to a little brother, we are doing it to Jesus. We want to serve everyone, regarding them, uh, saying that when we serve Him, it's like serving Jesus. So all this came from a pure heart of love for God, honoring God, respecting God, 
and want to do what God wants us to do. It's very important. You know, there are some people when they start the ministry, they are more humble. But when the ministry grows to be very large and the church is very big, and then they lose this attitude and they begin, uh, begin to be proud and they uh, forget to be humble and to be, uh, uh, to be humble to serve people. So we want to continue to have a humble heart to serve anyone. We are not kings, we are, we are servants of God. Okay, and then it's very important for us to learn to, be, to accept people to accept people as they are, even though they are weak. First, accept people even when they have weakness or sins. Now, even when they are weak, when they have sins, we want to guide them, but we still accept them. Just as when we come to Jesus, when we have sinned, Jesus did not despise us. He did not reject us. When we repent, God is very happy to accept us. So we want to have this attitude of acceptance of people. We want to, to uh, accept them and bless them. And then, Two, accept that they are important and worthy to be loved. So we uh, accept the people, uh, even though they are very humble, uh, they are an important person in the world, that people regard them as to be unimportant, uh, they are poor, but we still regard them as important and worthy to be loved. And three, look for their strengths, even when they have obvious weaknesses. So. Because God can use anyone who have a lot of weaknesses to be used by God. God can raise them up. God can give them strength instead. So we look for the strength and appreciate the strength and even when they have weaknesses. And show them love instead of criticism. So love them instead of criticize them. And help them overcome the sins and weaknesses out of love. So we help them, guide them. Uh, out of love, not out of despise, uh, but with a, a, a heart of loving, a loving heart. Okay, and shepherd willingly, honestly, and eagerly, not to be controlling. First Peter 5 2, shepherd the flock of God who, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not by dishonest gain, but eagerly not as being Lord over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Verse 5, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. So here is a message to the shepherds. So shepherd the flock of God, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but, by, but willingly, willingly serve God. Not for dishonest gain, but, for, but eagerly. Eagerly serve God, not, not for money. Now, it's right for pastors to receive money, but we don't serve with the purpose to get money. Nor as being lords, not as a pa masters over the, those entrusted to us. We are not their masters. We are examples to the flock. We are not the masters. They don't belong to us. Now, sometimes some people want to leave a church and go to another church for different reasons. Sometimes they move to another location. Sometimes they, they like another church more. Now, we can try to convince them and tell them how our church is following God and how when He follows God, then uh, God can bless him. We can tell them the reasons why he should stay. But he, if he doesn't want to stay, we don't want to say, you know, uh, I brought you to Jesus, you have to obey me. That To say you have to stay in this church, you cannot go away. So we should not be uh, lords of them, but we guide them, we, we are examples to them. Now when we really care about people, raise them up, feed them spiritually, and raise them up spiritually and train them to serve God, that their life is being used by God, these people want to stay in a church. So we want to we want to have godly reasons that people want to stay in the church, not by force. If we do it by force, sooner or later they will leave. So we are examples to the flock, full of love. Likewise, you young people should submit yourselves. So the young people should submit. Yet all of you 
be submissive to one another. So all of you, including the pastors, the leaders, the bishops, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. So everyone submit to one another. The pastor submit to the people in a sense that he will listen to the needs of the people. He will respond to the needs of the people. And Ephesians 5.21 talk about submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord of God. And then 5.22 talk about wives submit to your husband. So before Paul talks about wives submitting to the husband, he talks about submitting to one uh, to one another. So the husband should also submit to the wife to listen to her and and, uh, and, and pay attention to her needs and respond to her. So in the Bible, submission is not an absolute submission in a sense that no matter how bad the husband is or how bad the pastor is, the people still submit. It's different from submitting to God because God is always right, but people are not always right. So we want to honor our leaders, but if the leaders are not honoring God, for instance, if a leader uh, commits serious sins, then the people should advise him and uh, guide him to repent. If he doesn't repent, the people, you know, can, all the elders can join together, the deacons join together and have a meeting to, uh, to expel the pastor from the church. It's the responsibility of the people. It's not the church doesn't belong to the pastor only. It belongs to everyone. So the, past, the people, if the pastor is committing serious sins, the people have the right to have a meeting and then to ask the pastor to repent. And if the pastor doesn't repent, they have the right to ask the pastor to leave. So that's the scriptural teaching that the Bible talk about that discern the, uh, the, the false prophets. So when people are not following God's instruction, that the people have the right to uh, send a, the, a false prophet or the um, unfaithful pastors, the sinful pastors to leave the church. Okay, and then I important quality of a pastor is have mercy on people. Matthew 9.13, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So Jesus came to call the sinners. Jesus has a heart of uh, compassion and mercy on people. So as leaders, we want to have compassion on people. We want to bless the people. We want to help the people. We want to do things to lift them up, to raise up their spiritual life. Okay, and then we go down to the level of the people. 1 Corinthians 9.22 To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by, by all means save some. So, um, to the weak people I became as weak. It doesn't mean then he, he has sinned, so I sin. But to the person who sinned, I understand his sins, just as I understand my sins. I know that I have sinned before. I have sinned. I have different sins. So I, I have a humble heart to guide him instead of uh, hurting him. So we, we uh, to the weak, we understand the weakness and we accept the weakness and we are gentle to them. And willing to accept opinions and not being stubborn. Proverbs 12 15 the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he who heeds counsel is wise a fool thinks that he's always right now pastors most pastors are right most of the time but it's true that some pastors sometimes are wrong so we need to understand that when we are wrong when people point it out we want to be to be humble and admit our, uh, our wrongs and ask for forgiveness, especially from our wives. The wives see our lives. They see how we are daily. And then if our wife sees that we have some problem, we should be humble to admit our faults. And so it's very important to be able, willing to accept opinions. Now, um, when I had honeymoon with my wife, uh, she said, let's go to the beach to take pictures. 
and I said well in the beach there are a lot of sand and the sand can get into the camera and then uh, and then I have to clean up myself after I go to the beach and then she said well going to the beach is more romantic the pictures at the beach is more romantic so I listened to her and went to the beach and take the pictures and then afterwards she asked me uh, do you find that sometimes when I suggest something you first think about the difficulties instead of thinking about my heart my my reason that I want to go to the beach so can you pay attention to that she was very gentle to do that so I I became aware that when some people suggest something I I always think about the difficulties why would she not do that now after they tell me all the reasons I might change my mind but I should first listen to them but very easy for pastors to say well um, I see the difficulties so don't do it so I encourage all uh, everyone husbands wives and uh, pastors when people give you suggestion listen to them and see if they have good reasons to suggest to you and then the fact that they would think about the church and how to improve the church means that they have a heart to help the church so we want to to th uh, think about their desire that to bless the church and think about the suggestion do they have good reasons and would that bless the church so we want to uh, accept opinions so some people they, they say I'm never wrong uh, and then this person's I'm not always right so he's willing to accept that I'm not always right so it's important for us for us to improve for us to be become a good pastor we need to learn to um, accept opinions consider opinions and see if those opinions are helpful okay and then uh, principles in ministry some important guidelines for behavior don't gossip uh, now we as pastors sometimes we need to discuss uh, about how how to help someone with the leaders now this is not gossip when we have the the goal to help the person then it's not gossip but when we just talk about the person for fun and just to list his badness then it's gossip so we don't want to spread people's badness uh, we can understand the badness but what after we understand them we pray for them we want God to bless them we don't want to uh, uh, you know to give them no opportunities we want to give them opportunities to repent and change so we don't gossip and don't and once a pastor gossip it will spread to the people and the people say the pastor gossip and then they don't trust the pastor anymore and don't compare different people don't say oh, he is better than you he serves better than you three respect people don't accuse or hurt them don't counsel opposite sex in private so respect people that everyone is uh, honorable person in the sight of God everyone deserve our honor and don't accuse or hurt them we if we see some problem we want to guide them to repentance and and then also be careful not to counsel opposite sex in private or to build up uh, unusual unhealthy relationship with the opposite sex because it will open the way for the attack of Satan and let a group of people handle money so when there's money let a group of people handle it together not ourselves and then avoid traps that many pastors fall into money many people uh, not many but a number of people steal money and mismanagement of the church and their money and opposite sex reliance now sometimes it's not necessarily sex but reliance on the opposite sex relying on the person talking to the person more than talking to the wife that's already uh, committing sin that is not loving the wife but loving someone else more and family problems so if we uh, don't love the family members and command the spouse like commanding a member then it will cause problem in the family as a pastor in a home we should uh, listen to the wife and love them and treat them like Jesus treats the church and relationship with member not to be controlling and uh, avoid controlling and lack of love and jealousy uh, that now sometimes when some members 
can share the gospel, can do something better than the pastors. And some pastors become jealous and they don't let the person serve God because he's better than a pastor. We want to give opportunities to people that they can serve God, uh, to raise up people. And, and it's something God likes. And it will raise up people to serve God better. So if someone can preach well and his life is good, then we can start a new church with, with that person. And then also bitterness in ministry. So uh, some people, they get hurt and they have a lot of pressure and they have bit bitterness in ministry on all this can, has to be handled. And comparison with other ministers or other churches, they say that other minister is more powerful, his church is bigger. So this, we want to avoid it. We just want to be faithful to God and, and loving God and loving the people and God is responsible for the result trying to get attention and support. Sometimes pastors just want people's support. They want people to pay attention, always say, oh, how great a pastor he is, how great he's doing. Always want the compliment of the people. Then, then we are telling the people to honor us. We tell the people to honor God instead of uh, honoring us. Uh, we sh now, people honoring the pastor is fine, but don't honor the pastor more than God. And we should honor God much higher then we honor people. Okay, and then steal God's glory. That means when we do something good and then we want people to say, wow, he's a wonderful pastor, he's a powerful pastor, he has strong anointing. Whenever people say that, we say, glory to God, it's God's glory, God's honor, we should honor God. And in our heart, we sincerely say, God is your honor, I don't want to take your glory. Let me see how much I have here. Okay, we have more. So we'll s stop here and next time we'll continue uh, about the life of someone who serves God. And this is very, very important. Um, I have met many people that their lives have problem, And uh, they have spiritual gifts, but because of the problems in their life, they their life cannot be used by God. So I hope that we all will follow God and love God and let God use our life and raise up our life to a high level that we want to uh, take care of different problems in our life and follow God with love and, and a heart to bless people, have compassion and a humble heart to always honor God and not to steal the glory of God. So I. I pray that we all serve like that. If we are not serving like that, please ask God to forgive us and repent of our sins. Now, I have, God has given me this idea that we are building on the foundation of Jesus Christ and we are all building on it when we serve God. But if a person, when he's serving God, he's stealing the glory of God or when, he, and, and, or when uh, he's serving God, he's sinning or he is committing uh, adultery or he... Uh, stealing the money, when he does different things, then he is destroying his own ministry. And not only that, he's destroying his life. Then he's, he's building up a building and then tear it down. Do you want to build up a building and then tear it down? Uh, that's a waste of time. So if we are doing that, we must come to God for forgiveness and tr truly hate the sin and hate the ways that we have not honored God hate the way that we have not treated people with love and humility. We ask God to forgive us and ask God to change. So it's very important that we change our life, that we glorify God, and then we have a close relationship with God, and then that will influence the people. So I hope all the, all the pastors, all the leaders, all the Christians here will learn this lifestyle of honoring God and loving God all the time, because God is worthy to be praised. God is wonderful, God is good and loving, and we want to honor God, and, um, and uh, I, I pray that God is happy with your ministry. I pray that God says, will say to you, wow, you are a good and faithful servant. I love your ministry. I like your ministry. So can you say this to yourself? Can you say this? Uh, if you can say this, congratulations to you. If you can say, yes, I'm a good and faithful servant. Congratulations to you. If you cannot say it, then repent and ask God to forgive you. And then God is happy to forgive you and change your life. 
And if you are burdened, you say, Lord, you are responsible. I'm, I cannot carry the burden. Please help me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, God bless you. Uh, we'll have a prayer now. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. You are so wonderful. You are so good. You are full of kindness and you are full of humility. You always want to bless us. Thank you, Jesus. We need you. We, we hold on to you. We need you, Lord. We need your comfort. We need your strength. We need your help. We come to you for help and strength. Please bless us in our life, in our ministry. Uh, help us to have a close relationship with you that, we, that our whole life is pleasing to you. That we, Lord, help us not to be attracted by any woman. That we want to love our wife and uh, build up the marriage and not to be attracted by any woman. So, and that will destroy the, our lives and our ministry. Lord, help us. Help us to avoid sins, avoid temptations. Thank you, Jesus. You are full of love and mercy and kindness. You are so wonderful. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. We want to glorify you. We want more people to see your goodness. We want more people to love you. We want more people to obey you and, and follow you and serve you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you have used our life mightily. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.